So how much difference is there between a roll of 35mm film and a roll of 120 or medium format film? So I've been using my medium format camera from the start of this year and recently I've got myself a 35mm camera. And in this video I just wanted to take a look at both side by side and just see what the differences really are. This has intrigued me since I got my medium format camera and I'm sure there's a lot of you guys that are in the same boat. So since I've got into film photography or started to get interested in film photography, I've watched a lot of different creators, seen a lot of different photos in both medium format and 35mm and I have heard some people um, from time to time say that the 35mm negative is just too small and there just isn't enough detail in it. And I've always just wondered if I was to get myself a 35mm camera, would I just regret it? Will there just be such a noticeable difference that will make me just always want to shoot 120 instead of 35mm? And to be honest, it's kind of impossible to find the answer to that question without trying it for yourself. There are a lot of amazing photographers that use and love 35mm film, so I just decided to get myself a 35mm camera. I went for a Nikon FE with a 50mm f1.8, which you may have seen in a previous video. I have shot a few rolls through it and I wanted to shoot at least two before I done this video so I could just have a little bit more to look at and compare with all the 120 shots that I have. The medium format camera that I use by the way is a Yashica Matte and it has a 80mm Yashinon lens so these kind of work out at pretty much the same focal length which is quite handy for a little comparison. Okay so this photo was actually from the first roll that I shot on 35mm. I used a roll of Kodak Gold and if you've seen that video, you'll know I just kind of wandered around. We went to a few different spots over like a couple of weeks or so um, just to shoot a roll. I didn't know if the camera even worked at this point. So um, I got a few nice shots, but I wasn't worried about every shot being great. I just wanted to make sure everything worked. But I do really like how this shot turned out. And as you can see, the colors look pretty great. Um, I'll just show you the before. I literally just had to... Bring down the highlights a little bit it looks a bit more extreme to be fair than it was um i overexposed it a little bit or the camera did because i was in auto mode but i just brought down the highlights and to be fair that brought most of this color back um in the grass and stuff so this was a medium size scan i didn't go for the full size um tiff scans because again i didn't know um if the camera actually worked and i didn't just want to waste money on scans that may have been a waste of time so these ones are um 1984 pixels by so 2480 pixels so not the biggest scan but i think the colors and all look great on this and let's just go straight into 100 percent and i'll show you the detail so obviously i was focusing on the bench and the little life ring and to be fair at 100 percent i'm quite happy with that knowing that that is a smaller scan obviously i've only used 120 film which is very sharp at times um, if you stop down and stuff but that is quite sharp to me like look at the detail even to the edge here i'm pretty sure i shot this um at f5.6 i believe and as you can see the detail is pretty good i have added some sharpness to this in lightroom but i mean it sharpens up pretty well um you can see the detail in the ferns and stuff over here I mean, I think it looks pretty good and that's at 100%. As far as green goes with these scans, um, the Kodak Gold shots all look pretty clean to me. Um, that's the green in this area that's not really in focus. Yeah, quite quite smooth looking, I think, to be fair. Nothing really overwhelming or nothing that really stands out that much, to be fair. Um, it's kind of hard, I suppose, to tell with this kind of scene, but yeah, not... Um, not the most pronounced green, I would say. And as far as like tonal range and colors and stuff that obviously would be pretty good with um, 120 film, I think it looks great on 35mm. Um, so far, I haven't had any issues with that. Like I said, these were all shot in the auto mode and all I had to do was lower the highlights a little bit and the color range and everything. I mean, the colors look pretty great in that shot. So I'm pretty happy with that, um, especially for a medium sized scan. Okay, so here's a medium format shot from the Yashica Mat um, during our time in Olvera. And yeah, love how this shot turned out. 
Um, first things first, let's see what the detail is like compared to the 35 mil. So we zoom in to 100%. I mean, the detail on that is pretty crazy to be fair. Um, I believe I shot this at f16, maybe f11, but I'm pretty sure it was f16. And from using the Yashica mat a little bit, I know it is now capable of some very sharp shots. I mean, the detail in the castle and the rocks there, just super nice. Obviously, I have sharpened this a little bit in Lightroom, but nothing too extreme. But the detail all the way through down to the tree, and that's me at 100%. Like, the detail in the streets and everything, yeah, looks really good. These are the large TIFF scans. Um, by the way, this one is 4,581 pixels by 4,513. So, yeah, the biggest scans that I could get from um, the lab that I use. As far as green goes on 120, if you expose things properly, um, yeah, just very minimal, really clean looking. Just a little bit of green, you can kind of see it in the sky mainly, but yeah, really, a really clean look. Okay, so just for a little bit of a comparison, here is both of those photos zoomed in to um, pretty much 100% on both of them. Again, we're, we're in Lightroom here, and it might be a little bit harder to tell on YouTube, but obviously the 120 is sharper. The subject is also further away, the castle in this one, and it's it's still sharper, but we do have the big scan, whereas the 35mm on the left doesn't have the biggest scan. Yeah, I mean, obviously the 120 is sharper, but... I'm pretty happy with the 35mm in this circumstance and I was expecting the 35mm to be a lot worse. Obviously you see people's photos and stuff on YouTube and you can't really tell with a photo on YouTube just how good a quality and how sharp it is. Um, so when you try your own out and you get your scans back you can really see the difference but I was expecting 35mm to be um, a lot softer and have a lot less detail. Obviously it has less detail but it still looks really good and this is the smaller scan. really like both of them shots. The tonal range in 120 is obviously very good and um, there's quite a bit of room for moving stuff around as there is with 35mm too. Um, but yeah, probably from what I've seen so far more with 120 which is to be expected. But yeah. Okay, so here is another photo from that same roll on Kodak Gold. The first roll um, I put through the Nikon and this is a shot just of some benches. I quite like it. Not the greatest shot ever, but if you know me, you know I like a shot of a bench. And um, this one really did surprise me. Again, this photo is the medium scan from the same roll. Um, the next photo I'll show you one, which is the higher res TIFF scan. But yeah, this one surprised me. So let's just see the detail. So that's at 100%. I was focusing obviously on this bench. It was relatively close to me, but to me, that is some great detail. I was not expecting 35mm film to look that sharp. That looks pretty great, I think. Um, this bench is kind of falls out of focus a little bit. But yeah, I'm really happy with the detail on that bench. I mean, it's, it's sharp, so I obviously got my focus right, which is nice on a manual lens. But yeah, really happy with that shot. Super clean too, super sharp. Um, let's do a little green check on this one too. Again, Kodak Gold, just really clean. You can just about see the green if you really zoom in to the sky. But yeah, tonal range and everything. I done a little bit of an edit on this one, which is really just bringing the highlights back and just leveling things up. Yeah, really good, a lot of detail in it, really sharp. And the green's pretty clean too. So just to stick with the similar theme here is another medium format shot um, from Olvera again on Porter 400 and a shot of a bench so we can sort of get something similar to the 35mm so let's zoom in to 100% on this shot and as you can see with 120 film lots and lots of detail that bench is super sharp I actually nailed focus on this one which I'm quite happy with um quick look at the detail in the little um pavement or little cobbles if that's what you call those <laughs> um super sharp in the grass and stuff yeah even if we look over at the tree here and this is on the left hand side yeah all sharp um super sharp lots of detail as with all of the 120 shots when you get it right and use the right aperture um let's do a little bit of a green check on this one blue sky yeah very clean 
Really like how the green looks on the 120 shots. Um, with Portra, again, the colors and the tonal range just look great on 120. I just had to adjust this one ever so slightly, bring down the highlights, just add a little bit of saturation. And you can even see with the um, white walls here, the sun was pretty much shining directly on those. And I was able to recover the detail and stuff. Yeah, it, it just looks really nice. I love how Portra looks in 120. Super nice. Okay, so let's do another little side-by-side -side comparison. We have both of the bench shots, um, pretty much the exact same framing on both of these, but let's zoom in to roughly about 100% on that one. Roughly 100 on this one. Um, so, as you can see, the detail on both of these is very good. Bear in mind again that the 35mm shot on the left is the medium scan and not a high res scan. The one on the right of the 120 film is the highest TIFF scan. And obviously, you can see there is a bit of a difference in detail if we look at the ground and just the sort of the grain on the wood and the chair and stuff. The 120 is obviously sharper. But that is to be expected. Um, it should be sharper. And it's also the bigger scan. So it kind of has the advantage here. Looks really good. But again, I'm really happy with both of them. I think they both turned out really nicely. And I would be happy if all my 35mm shots were as sharp as that. Um, just one thing to bear in mind. Uh, I have only shot two rolls on the Nikon. And I'm still getting used to um, what the best settings are to get the sharpest results. Um, I pretty much have it figured out. I think for the Yashica, um, I pretty much use f11 and f16 for most of my shots. But with the Nikon, I'm pretty sure f5.6 is probably the sharpest. But uh, I need to do a little bit more experimenting and just shoot a little bit more um, so I kind of know what's going to get me the best results in certain scenes. So just another little thing to bear in mind. I may not be getting the best results um, out of the Nikon because I'm still getting used to it. Okay, so here is another shot from the Nikon. This is from my most recent roll where I did get the bigger scans. As you can see, this one is 6,774 pixels by 4,492. So a lot bigger than the first photos that I showed you on 35mm. And this is a photo on the 35mm camera of my Yashica, which I really like. I think this turned out pretty nicely, actually. The photos from the second roll that I shot were all on Fujifilm C200 and obviously I got the bigger scan so just a little bit of an edit on this one, really not much at all. I just lowered the highlights a little bit and did a little bit of sharpening but yeah really like how this one turns out. Let's jump into 100%. Um, this one is probably one of the best on the latest roll that I shot. I mean I can't imagine you can expect to get much better results than that on 35mm. I could be wrong, I have only used one camera and I've only used it a couple of times, but that is pretty damn good for a 100% zoom, I think. Got the focus again, which I'm quite happy with, um, but if we zoom out just a little bit, I mean that looks pretty damn good. That is a sharp result right there, lots of detail. Yeah, really like how that turned out. And just while we're in there, you can see the grain this time on Fuji Film C200. Again, just just really clean. Just a really nice little bit of grain, but yeah, really clean looking. And again, the colors just look really nice. And this one didn't really have to do much to get the final result. And taking another look at a medium format shot. This one is actually from a little town called Silves in Portugal. Again, some of you may have seen that photo vlog. If not, I would recommend it. Definitely one of my favorites. Really like how this photo turned out. Just kind of a random scene, but I like it. Um, let's zoom in to 100% on the sign and the tree here. I mean, actually, that's not 100%, but look at the detail there. It's just, it's just so sharp. Um, again, I believe this was shot at f16, maybe f11 on the Yashica. Lots of detail in the leaves and stuff. I mean, I can't really ask for much more than that from a 60 year old film camera. <laughs> you can see the detail in the tiles and all on the roof. Yeah, I mean, that is as good as I need it to be, really. 
that is really sharp even you can see the little cobblestone straight here yeah just super sharp i'll zoom into the sky just to show you the green on this one again porter 400 just super clean you can almost hardly see the green in that one yeah really not much just a really clean result but yeah really happy with how that one turned out these are two totally different types of photos but just to show a comparison again um this time the 35 mil being the larger scans and on fujifilm c200 whoa that zoomed in way too much let's go to 100 percent you can look at the detail of the graffiti on this sign and then the sharpness of the front of my Yashiga mat. Again, both very good. I'm happy with both. Obviously, the detail is better on the 120, but that is to be expected. But this time with the bigger scans on 35mm, it's definitely a lot closer when you get the, when you get the focus spot on. Yeah, it looks pretty damn good. And the green is actually not that much different this time very clean on both photos okay i'll just show one more example of each and compare those but i think you get the idea i'm pretty happy so far with 35 mil and like i said that's still me figuring out the nikon fe and what works best and just getting used to the focusing and stuff with it um but yeah pretty happy with the colors and stuff i can get which i did expect like i said i've seen a lot of people shoot 35 mil and they love it they get great results you have a bigger choice of films you have more photos so there's a lot of benefits of 35 mil and i was just hoping that when i got a 35 mil camera and shot a few rolls that i wasn't disappointed there's a few photos that i'm still wondering why they're not as sharp in 35 mil but um the ones i'm showing you here are some of the better ones that i got and yeah uh so far pretty happy with it Okay, so here's another shot on 35mm, again on Fujifilm C200, and yeah, I took a photo of a Volkswagen camper van on our way home from a trip um, we were on recently, and I mean, I know a lot of film photographers take photos of old cars, I love old cars long before I got into photography, and I still love them, uh, so yeah, I know it's a bit of a cliche thing, or at least people say it is, but um, yeah, I love old cars, so I'm going to take photos of them. But uh, yeah, I done a very slight edit. I just lowered the highlights on this one a little bit and just raised the shadows a little bit too. Very, very subtle edit and I think it looks pretty good. So again, if we go into 100%, obviously I was quite close to the van in this one. Got my focus spot on, which I'm quite happy with. Um, like I said earlier, using the Nikon FE with the 50mm f1.8. I believe I shot these at f5.6, maybe f4, but something close to that. I was never really using it in too low of an aperture, but I mean, it doesn't really get much better than that, I don't think. You can see from the number plate, super sharp. The light, even the lines, I'll zoom in a little bit more. Even the lines in the light are super sharp. You can see the detail. In the seat inside and stuff which is even kind of slightly past the focus and the wing mirror yet yeah, really sharp um, and while we're in here you can see the grain a little bit more on this one i have raised the shadows up a little bit but um yeah you can really see the grain a little bit more in this one but it still looks nice it's not overpowering yeah really like how that one turned out and another one on 120 probably one of my favorite shots i've took with the yashika mat since i got it um, this little cottage that we stayed in in Donegal just love the colors in this one how it was able to deal with the brightness outside too the film just dealt with that nicely that is one thing I love about film if you nail your exposure and take the time to line things up and get your exposure right you can just create a shot which doesn't really need much editing at all um, yeah just really happy with this one if we zoom in to 100% look at the detail in that that is pretty crazy we've got an old i believe that's an old coca-cola bottle right there and you can see the detail and then you can actually see the detail in this stone which has been painted which is kind of crazy you can see all the detail in these bottles and then you can really see the detail in the curtain here pretty crazy actually just how sharp that is from 
film in general and from a camera that's 60 years old that that surprised me um yeah ridiculously sharp that one so here's the shots side by side um not really similar shots but they are of two subjects that are relatively close um both shots look really good if we zoom in to 100 on both of these there's the headlight and we've got the little painted rock here with the bottle beside it I forgot to do a little green check on the 120 shot and um, pretty clean you can just see it in the white of the window here but besides that really clean nice little bit of green and um, obviously more pronounced than the 35 mil but I mean pretty good in sharpness they both look really good there um, the 35 mil in that one looks extremely good actually but again, really happy with both. Um, I was really expecting 35 mil, especially when you zoom in this much, to be noticeably softer and have a lot less detail. But that is not the case, which is pretty damn nice. So yeah, I mean, overall, I'm definitely surprised with how good 35 mil is. I was definitely expecting, like I said, shots to be just a lot softer, have a lot less detail. So far, pretty damn happy with them. Now, I am comparing the 35mm photos to my scans from my Yashica Mat, which is a really old camera. It is also 6x6, so it's not the biggest um, negative you can get on medium format. Um, I believe that's 6x7 or maybe 6x9, which may have even more detail and even more tonal range. I'm not sure. I haven't used it, um, but they would be newer cameras, so... They might be a little bit sharper, but I mean, as far as sharpness goes, I think the Yashica is easily enough for me. I don't really see where it could be much sharper, to be honest. But um, I think 35mm scans held up pretty well there, at least those ones anyway. There was obviously a few where I maybe didn't use the right aperture and missed focus and stuff. So there's no point in really showing those because that might be down to my error. But the ones where I nailed the focus, pretty happy with it. Um, like I said, still getting used to it, but it definitely isn't a regret. I'm glad I got it, and it's fun to have a 35mm camera and have a lot more shots and just feel like you can take those shots and not have to worry about each one being a great photo. It gives you a little bit more freedom, but um, yeah, I, I can't really say much more about it because I haven't used the camera enough. I'm not sure when it comes to prints and stuff how much difference there would be there. I'm sure it's probably more noticeable when it comes to big prints, for example, but um, yeah, hopefully this was helpful to you in some way or other if you've started your film journey with medium format and you're maybe thinking about getting 35mm but you're worried that it might be a waste of time, I would say go for it. Just be careful with the camera you choose. Make sure you choose a good solid camera with a sharp lens to get the best out of those smaller negatives. I intended to keep this one relatively short. But at this moment in recording, I'm not quite sure that will be the case. But anyway, hopefully this one was helpful to you in some way or other. If it was, maybe give the video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you want to see more. And uh, yeah, as we always say, take it easy. Don't be a stranger. Probably not going to be short, is it? Not the greatest at keeping them quick, am I?